now uh, tell me where the um, yeah what is it out yes somebody had a doubt was it siddharth no sir not me sir sachin Some sachin this side sachin yeah okay sachin tell us what your doubt is uh, sir can i show my screen uh, for uh, for interactive broker sir tws uh, in, the, in the app sir i sir logged in and uh, add all the uh, st uh, stock equity stock you send us and how do you trade sir uh, because uh, i have sir can i see your screen share my screen then i can show you hello sorry can you see the screen now sachin yes sir my yes yeah yes sir yes sir okay excellent okay so we will just show uh, how to trade that will come to a little bit later uh, but i'll just give you a quick answer actually that is in sequence uh, it comes a little bit later but okay, i will show you any of the tickers okay now notice that facebook and amazon neither of which are in your uh, uh, in your sir list. i add all the tickers sir i add all the tickers you send us added all the tickers i'll just show them here how to add okay i'm just going to insert a row here let's add dow okay so let's add dow chemical is one of your um dow inc okay so let's add stock smart i'm just i'm showing everybody how to add the tickers okay sachin has done it himself without any guidance that's great by the way you guys can also look up the ib uh, ib web, web website they have a lot of interesting lot of very nice uh, tutorials and also you can go to the youtube page for interactive brokers and uh, you will find lots of guidance on the tws search for tws okay ib tws and then you'll get lots of guidance on how to do all these uh, if you get stuck on any of these uh, steps but i will show you the basic steps so we are just showing how to add the ticker right so this is dow now uh, all right so dow in, uh, see this is all closed because us markets are are closed right now so i'll show you how to trade using the uh, market which is open right now what market is this this is uh, the north american crude oil benchmark okay the future this is actually a futures contract so this uh, north american crude oil benchmark this is trading round the clock pretty much okay and you can see how tight the spread is uh, so uh, if you want to trade here what you do is uh, if you want to buy we'll explain the logic for this later but I'll, right now i'll just give you the broad guidance uh, to a very quick quick and dirty guidance if you want to buy you click on the offer price the ask price if you want to sell you will click on the bid price so if you see immediately as soon as you click on the bid price you saw me clicking on the oil uh, futures contract bid price automatically the system knows that i am a seller okay now if i if i delete this just press delete now if i notice if i click on the offer price the ask price the automatically the system knows that i am a buyer all right so now you'll have to set up we'll have to go through all these things all these uh, uh, one of the problems you'll find is that when you ask a simple question uh, the answer to that is actually going to be very long because i have to make sure that you have the full context of uh, you know the entire problem so all these things involve discussion on uh, you know what is the time in force this tif is for time in force which means common sense but these are all things you have to understand when we do order types we'll be doing a module on order types uh and uh, i'm just trying to get you started on the analysis first but when you do the order types you will see how long is this order valid so you should always place gtc orders interestingly i don't think even in india even now you have gtc orders except unless you're doing uh, interactive brokers they are also present in india so other than this software nobody else has gtc orders the last time i checked so gtc means good till cancelled okay so this stays there until you cancel it so what i will do there's a little problem with my particular uh, login because uh, you'll see the problem but essentially what you do when you place the order try not to actually place the order okay there are various types of orders limit orders market orders i suggest initially you go for limit orders so limit order means of buying at limit this is the market price you don't want to buy right now you don't want to buy right here uh, you want to buy a bit lower so let's make it like i just click on that price i can edit it Let's say we get 41.10. Okay, so I don't want to buy it at this level. I want to buy it lower. If oil, if the oil price goes down to this level, that's the meaning of the limit order. I'm going to be buying at 41.10. Okay, we'll discuss more details later. 
but I place this kind of order and then I hit transmit. But you'll see there's an error which you guys will not get, but I'm getting it because I'm the master account. So you hit transmit and this error, this message that I'm getting that you guys will not get. Okay. Uh, and you will get all this amount here. Uh, since I'm getting the error, you, you will not get, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not getting the rest of the stuff because they don't want, they're not gonna let me trade. There's a little problem with my account. But anyway, so you can see straight away here, you'll see the amount means here, the, uh, the total contract value. Okay, so since in this case, 41,100, because I'm buying at 41,10, this is for each barrel of oil. This is the price for each barrel of oil. And, and this contract is for 1,000 barrels. So that 41,000 that you saw, it's this into 1,000, this price into 1,000. So that's how you trade. So uh, Sachin, this is a short answer to your question. And then of course, yes. we have to go into the details of all these questions. And out of it, you can ask more questions. Like, why should I choose? This one is the easy answer. Why should I choose GTC? Uh, this you should all do GTC, okay? Unless there's a very special reason to choose anything else. This one, should I choose limit? Should I choose market? There are all kinds of orders. There are thousands of order types. You can go to the IB webpage if you want to do your own research now, ahead of time. You will see like, uh, maybe not thousands, but <laughs> literally more than a hundred order types, okay? You can see all these, you can experiment with all this stuff if you want to. But uh, I would say initially just focus on limit, market, stop. These are the important orders, okay? Market if touched. We will be doing these orders. We will only do these basic order types. But even that is conceptually, I find most of your seniors are not clear about it even after finishing two years. They are not clear about the order. So make sure you understand your fundamentals very well. Always everything, please make sure. If you have any problem understanding anything, you ask me. You can call me anytime. You can email me if you need to have a long session. Like Siddharth did a long session. We did a long session on Google Meet with all his issues. Then you can schedule that. Email me, we can schedule it. You can call me, you can call me and email me anytime. There is no restriction on number of times or any time of day. But you have to make sure that you understand because if you don't tell me that I'm confused about this now, how will I know? So it is your responsibility to make sure that you have a clear conceptual understanding of everything, okay? Everything is conceptual, nothing has to be memorized. Everything is conceptual and the stuff that has to be memorized, you just note it down in a note and keep it somewhere in a spreadsheet. And you, when you need to access it, you access it. Okay, so not everything is conceptual. So you will cover the limit order, market order, stop limit order, and market if touched order (MIT). Okay, sir. So these are yes. Sir, your voice is breaking in between. Is is my voice clear yes, now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, screen is not moving. Screen is not moving. Screen is not moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is frozen on. One minute. So, CL, okay, because I can see. So, now, right now, let me one sec. Let me just check, check one more thing now. Let me just go to this. Uh, can you now see the session notes board? No, Are you no, guys, sir. you're not seeing the session notes? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. 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 Fine. Right. Come on, session notes. You should. Okay. Now, one more test. Are you seeing the Finviz stock screener? No, sir. No, sir. It's finished. It's not finished. Okay. Let me, um, let me do one thing. What I will do is I will stop sharing and then I will try to reshare again. Okay. Let me see if that works. All right. I'll stop sharing. All right. Now, what do you see? You see the uh, Teams display, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you see my name in the Teams display. Okay, all right. Okay, now let me start sharing again. Uh, screen number two. Now, are you seeing the? Are you seeing the mm, the Finvis stock screener? Sir, it no, is sir. No, no. to load. Uh, right now, nothing no, is visible. Okay, that is very uh, that is very odd. 
Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Should we, uh, maybe we should try one thing. Let me try stop sharing once, share once again, once again. Let me try that. Um, I have to stop sharing, then I have to click share again. Okay. Screen number two. Uh, or maybe I should just leave the meeting and rejoin. I think that's that's a better one because I've already tried it once. So I'm going to leave the meeting and rejoin. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Okay, am I audible? Yeah, actually, yeah, you can hear me, right? Okay, I'm already getting a message, so this must be due to the network uh, quality, but I've actually saved up my GeoFi device. I didn't use it at all since last mi uh, since midnight. I don't know why now even the GeoFi is giving problems. Okay, um, uh, now it's not giving me the network quality. Let's see, we'll try it one more time. It may have been due to network quality. Okay, let's try it one more time. Screen number two, uh, windows, we don't want the windows actually, we want, uh, okay, we want screen number two, let's try that. It did work initially, so initially such as they able to see, you guys were able to see the data entry, right? Uh, recording has started, okay, fine. All right, how is it now? Can you see the stock screener? Okay, when I go, can you see the chart of euro, of the euro? Oh, there's a blank space, okay. That's very strange. Okay, so uh, what do we do now? The only other option is if I switch to Airtel and see what happens. Okay, let me try and do that. Let's give it a last shot with Airtel. Otherwise, we'll have to try some other technique. One minute. So this is the only problem because our telcos are actually not providing good quality. I mean, these guys are, I have a, a 2 GB per day on a three devices. And uh, every time, as soon as I cross my 50% limit, my speed goes down. Actually, <laughs> speed should go down after 100%, right? I mean, I, it's un unbelievable. So anyway, let me try the Airtel. So you still do not see the Euro chart. Okay, no, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll try. Um, we'll try something else. We'll. Okay. Where were we? We were actually. Uh, we had answered uh, a little bit. We had answered to some extent. We had answered. Uh, uh, Sachin's question. Okay. Um, it's interesting that uh, this Teams is causing a problem because my interactive brokers, the TWS is also very sensitive when it comes to data feed. And uh, if you have a slight weakness in your network uh, connection, it will actually just, uh, you know, uh, immediately start getting data error messages. But the TWS data feed is stable. So it might even be a Teams problem. Actually, it might be a team software problem because I believe nowadays everything, all these networks, the servers are over, overloaded because everybody is using them. So that would be a problem as well. But anyway, let's try and see if we get anything better with Airtel. I will have to now. Um, we'll give it some time. Okay, in the meantime, I'll just try to give you some general lectures of before we... Uh, We'll, we'll go on now. If you see the last day, we have tried, discussed three decision problems, DP1, DP2, and DP3. That is the choice of asset class, markets, and instruments. And I will just, um, so I'll just add a little bit to this discussion here. In the previous day's notes, you're not able to see this, okay, that uh, these three decisions, okay, whether, you uh, whether you're going to choose which asset class are you going to choose, which instrument are you going to choose, 
and which market are you going to choose, which markets are you going to choose. These decisions are usually uh, decided, okay, I will say, uh, okay, either directly or I'm going to write indirectly like this. You can't see anything. But what I'm writing is actually I'm writing all this stuff in the board itself. Uh, they are decided I, indirectly or directly or indirectly by the investor mandate. What does that mean? The investor mandate means in this case, for instance, I have given you, I have arranged these accounts for you. So I am like your investor. Investor is the guy who's giving you the money to invest. Okay. So typically what happens with these three decisions that which asset class do I invest in, which markets do I invest in, and which instruments do I trade. These decisions usually are uh, solved by, uh, these are all problems, so they have to be solved. The decision problems have to be solved. These are usually solved by the investor mandate, which can be either direct or indirect. Direct is an example of direct mandate is what you're seeing now, okay? In this PWS project, I have explicitly told you, I am your investor, I have told you that you will not trade anything other than equities. So I have decided the asset class problem. I have solved the asset class problem, decision problem. I have told you that you will trade only those specific tertiary markets which I have given you, nothing else, okay? So uh, let me just, I, I'm just gonna disconnect now so I may lose the connection, then I'll come back, okay? All right, guys, uh, can you hear me now? Still bad connection. 
in fact uh, still getting a bad network message i could not even uh, connect the uh, the airtel the because it's a hotspot connection the system the somehow the system is not picking it up uh, can you hear me guys Yes sir. yes sir yes sir okay, yes, okay. Sir. we'll give it one last uh, we'll, we'll give it one last try on the screen sharing and uh, hopefully this works i suspect it might even be a uh, as i said it's a teams problem we'll have to just deal with these problems uh, presenting why does it say give control what give control okay give control to somebody okay uh, this uh, yeah i'm presenting okay so let's see what happens Are you able to see the session notes board? Okay. Not yet. Okay. Euro chart. If you see the euro chart, then for some reason, some for some no, reason, sure. the presenting is not working. It's not working. Okay. So uh, we'll have to figure out a solution here. What we will do is uh, maybe I should have. I think it's a little too late to go to Zoom for a meeting. Or uh, let's do one thing, guys. Let's not lose the time. We definitely need. Is everybody on Zoom? Uh, okay, let's do it this way. Let me do it this way. Anybody who is not on Zoom. Anybody who is not on Zoom. Okay, no response. So we can assume that everybody is on Zoom, because I don't want to lose this. Uh, you know, I don't want to lose the. Yeah, Ketan has his hand up and Vipul has his hand up. Yes, Ketan. Let's go with Ketan first. Sir, I am not on Zoom. You are not on Zoom. Okay. So and Vipul. Yes, Vipul. You had your hand up. Sir, Vipul's typing message is his mic is not working. Sir, okay. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Fine, no problem. Okay, so what is he typing? Let's look at the chat. Sir, the screen uh, is visible. My my. Sir, now the screen is. Sir, your screen no. is visible now. Screen is visible. Sir. You can see the euro now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. We have to. So I guess it takes some time, maybe. Now, can you see the session notes? No, sir. Not yet. Not yet. No, sir. But you could see the euro. Maybe there is a lag. Somebody was mentioning. I think Mitali was mentioning the other day. There is a little bit of a lag. Uh, Jakar is asking for my contact details. Now, <laughs> contact details are in every email. One sec, I've got some sound nearby. I'm going to switch off the. My, I may go into mute. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Jakar, please check the emails I send you. All my contact details are in my emails, in the signature of my emails. Okay. All right. Any luck on the session notes? Are you yes, able sir. to see? Yes, sir. They just appear. Yes, sir. You yes, sir. It's visible now. Yes, sir. Okay, so that means there's a little bit of a lag. Okay, so I should work. I will work on the basis of the lag. All right. So this is obviously this. This seems to be nothing to do with our configurations, but it is basically a software problem. Either it's a network bandwidth problem or it's a software problem. So uh, I have a suspicion this was a software. Problem. Anyway, so we'll have to just live with these things. Okay. Otherwise, online learning is quite okay, I think. But uh, if you have, we have some teething problems like this. Just bear with it. Uh, but uh, I just stay focused on learning. As I said, you can still learn very well, uh, and I'm there to help you guys with any kind of doubts. You can always call me, and we can schedule meetings. So it should not affect your learning. According to me, it should not affect your learning. A lot of people say a lot of bad things about online learning, but according to me, it's quite good, especially when you have access to the teacher. All right. So okay. So the point I was saying here is that uh, okay. Uh, now you are able to see. Uh, I'm just going to leave out the chat. I'll just I'll have the participants off so I can see on so I can see whoever's got their hands up. Okay, all right. So um, now uh, in this uh, session notes, you can see that uh, I have talked about uh, this this part which I'm writing. Okay, 
let me ask the people individually. Gagan, can you see the session notes? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So what I'm saying here, I'm just clarifying. We are going through the decision problems. Please remember any time you have any confusion about anything. Uh, how did that come after this? I'm not following the logical flow. Any such question you have to ask immediately. If you don't ask, I, I can't figure it out that you uh, I can't figure out that you have not understood. So DP1 to DP3, OK, the asset class, market and instrument, these three decision problems are solved by directly or indirectly by the, So I've written it like this indirectly by the investor mandate means either indirectly or directly. Right now, what do I mean by that? Directly by the investor mandate means that give you a quick. Actually, we are doing a little bit of an in-depth. Uh, this implies. So I'm writing this. Actually, uh, let me just do it here in today's session. So we'll have some material for today's session. Um, today's session. These are the session notes. How do uh, and there is also a spreadsheet special note which we have in the spreadsheet. OK, there's a session notes in the spreadsheet. Today is 7th August. All right, so I'm just clarifying this. All right, so we did discuss. Uh, I just also look at uh, intro to order entry. Order entry based on such as question. And the second point we are discussing is this. So how do we solve these problems? Uh, uh, decided based on uh, ex uh, traders' expertise. Let me make a investor traders' uh, expertise, market liquidity, etc. Okay. Uh, these are generally decided indirectly, okay, by the investor mandate, indirectly, either indirectly or directly. Uh, decided directly by the investor mandate means that investor. Okay, I'm going to write everything in caps. It's much easier for me. Investor explicitly uh, uh, um, himself. English is not very good here, but we'll, we'll worry about the basic sense of it. Himself specifies. Uh, the uh, asset class, we'll just write it this way. Asset class I'm just going to write S minus asset classes, markets, instruments to be traded. OK? So example of a direct investor mandate is what you have got, what you guys are facing in this project, which is so we we'll just remove this yellow over here. Um, is what you guys are facing in this project. Uh, OK, just remembering briefly uh, if uh, Ketan and uh, I don't know if Vipul doesn't have Zoom, but you guys also Ketan, make sure you get Zoom and anybody else who doesn't have Zoom. Get that also because I think uh, we should have a third backup. So if we have we have Google Meet, Google uh, Meet, which is not working very well for presentation for me. So we should have a backup at least for Zoom. So if we don't, if the Teams thing is giving problems, we will quickly uh, leave the meeting here and go and set up a meeting in Zoom. So uh, make sure that whoever doesn't have Zoom, just create a Zoom account. Okay, uh, I will separately ask for your Zoom account IDs later on. OK, so uh, here what we do is directly by the investor mandate. I have directly uh, told you that you can only trade these. You can only trade this asset class, these markets and this uh, this instrument. OK, if we go back to our uh, asset classes, markets, instruments view, then you will see that. OK, these are the instruments. I've only told you to trade spot. OK, so uh, spot. Remember, that, uh, I'm just going to bring that picture into view. Right, which is we are discussing that. This one. All right. So remember, these are the instruments. OK, so remember one thing that most equity markets uh, trade on spot basis. OK, so when you guys hear about oh, Japanese equities are down, European equities are down, uh, US equities, Dow Jones is up, etc. Those they're actually referring to 
uh, equities trading on a spot through spot instruments. Okay, most equity markets, uh, the main activity is in the spot markets and the other type of activity is in the option markets. But mainly the discussion when they don't mention anything, it is actually equity spot. It is not futures, it is not forwards, it is not swaps. Okay, and it is not value cash instruments trading value, which is all spot. All our NSCs, all the activity is in spot. So you are trading spot equities. And so this, who decided this? I decided it. You had no say in the matter. Okay, I decided. This is what is called directly by the investor mandate. Indirectly by the investor mandate, what does that mean? Indirectly by the investor mandate means that trader, okay, uh, is sort of uh, based on his, okay, I'm sorry, I'm using uh, his instead of her, okay, so we can use his, her, his means his includes her, okay. So, uh, the trader based on his expertise or and or market demand. Launches fund with specific uh, investment restrictions and permissions. What is happening here is that the trader is actually uh, so the trader, let's say the trader decides that I have expertise only in real estate, all right? So the trader decides that I have expertise in real estate. And so the trader decides to launch a, let's say, a private equity fund or simply even a REIT, a real estate investment trust, which we have here now in India. So it's a pretty new thing for India. The U.S. they had for six, since the 1960s. Okay, this is why you have to study finance based on the U.S. market, not on the Indian market. But let's say, so what that means is the investor feels that my expertise is only in real estate. So the investor will launch a fund and he uh, feels that there is some kind of demand in the market from investors to invest in real estate. So he launches a real estate investment trust, which is basically a, a you know, an equity type instrument, a spot equity type of instrument, okay, focused on real estate. So uh, there he will basically launch a, a real estate investment trust an equity uh, real estate investment fund. Okay, so based this is based on the trader's expertise and also based on his assessment of market demand. So he launches the fund with a specific investment restriction, which means this fund, when he is launching the fund, he will automatically say that this fund will not invest in currencies, it will invest in equity options, it will not invest in debt, okay? It will invest, it will not invest in commodities. So this is what I mean by restrictions. And then it will have permissions to invest only in real estate. Okay, so it is happening from the investor side, from the trader side, that the trader is uh, launching a fund, but in launching the fund, he's already taking into account his own expertise and market demand, and he is launching the fund with specific investment restrictions and permissions. So it is still indirectly decided by the investor mandate because he is uh, he is actually catering to a type of a particular type of. Uh, you know, market. Usually everything is driven by, sorry, everything is driven by uh, market demand. So this should be actually, I should maybe highlight this. All right, market demand drives everything. All these fund launches, they are driven partly by expertise, but mainly it's on market demand. Okay, you feel there's a demand for this kind of fund, and then you launch that. Okay, so that's what it means essentially. All right, so. Okay, so let's go on to some of the other decision problems that you will have to solve. And let's take input from the students now. And let's see, our first ticker was Dow, right? So we'll have, so let's say we have chosen, we have gone through this, we are trying to see what the investment problems are. DP1 to DP3, asset class, market and instrument, okay? These things we have decided, all right? So we have already decided these. Now we come to what this is how you are supposed to proceed. Okay, I'm giving you a blueprint. We will only look at Dow and uh, we will go through. So what we do is having known this, these three decision problems have been solved. So we know what asset class, what markets, what instrument to trade. And accordingly, we have set up our 
Uh, tick up, we have the Dow stock price when the US market opens, this will be trading, okay? So you will have this kind of bid of a price, uh, which you don't have right now because it's closed. So you will have that. Now, what will happen is, so what we'll do, whatever we do for Dow, okay? Follow the same process for all these. So what I'm trying to do right now, remember once again, if it feels a little bit haphazard, please free, feel free to ask questions like Sachin had a uh, doubt about the order entry, so he asked the question. Yeah, that is how we proceed. At this point, whenever we have a doubt, you ask the question. But also understand that it is going to feel a little bit haphazard because you have to understand my problem that I cannot afford to uh, proceed in the way that I would ideally like. Ideally, I would have liked to spend the first year teaching you guys all these things because these are not there in the traditional finance textbooks. Okay, this is all the stuff that you need to know, the theory you need to know to understand markets and uh, you know, trading and all these other issues. So uh, this material, it will take a lot of time to cover this material also. Ideally, what I would do is I would cover all this material with you first and then I would give you these kind of projects. But because of the structure of the program, we don't have that luxury. So you should understand this. So when you have when you feel like things are not proceeding in a sequential manner, ideally, uh, you have to understand why this is happening. Okay, so I'm explaining that problem to you. But because I am constrained by this very short two month time period in which we have to finish the project. And uh, so I am therefore what I'm doing at this stage, you have to understand my mindset. What I'm trying to do at this stage is to quickly set you guys up because I know we will have very little time and we want to have a little bit of time, at least four to five weeks for real trading in the project. So what I'm trying to do is to give you a quick and dirty, uh, you know, a quick and dirty method to operate the, in the market and do this project, okay? And then as you are doing it, we will give you some finer points in terms of theory. We will try to follow the sequence and give you all the theory, okay? This is what is going, this is basically what is happening. So understand the context so that uh, you know why these problems are happening. Okay, so here, what was I saying? So these three have been solved, okay? So now I have my list of markets. I'm going to Dow, okay? We will start, we will have the discussion with respect to Dow, but we, the same logic, the same steps can be followed for all the others, okay? This is your entire list of 33 tickers. What you are going to do is, you are going to go through all the steps that we show for Dow, and uh, you will just repeat those uh, logics, uh, logical steps for all the other tickers, okay? And that will lead to your decisions. So let's look at this. Now I go to the first ticker Dow. I look at the Dow chart. Okay, so Dow is Dow Inc. This became Inc. Actually, it used to be chemical, Dow Chemical. Now it became Dow Inc. What happened? Oh, that's because I think the new uh, new stock doesn't have much. Uh, it's a post merger. I think it's a most post merger. Uh, they bought some some of the parts of the fund, so the data is quite limited. So in this case, what I should do is uh, I'm going to just run this uh, stock screener once again. Now I don't want something with such limited trading history. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back uh, to the um, uh, the screener that I have. Uh, I didn't realize this actually. I just chose it. All right. What is the screener showing? My filters, which I wanted. Remember I told you that one of the uh, major considerations in when the trader is selecting the stocks or even an investor is selecting the stocks is liquidity. If you go for liquid markets, you will not have the problem of market manipulations. I mean, I should write this also that. Yes, very important factor because many times when people are uh, trading in, in, especially in Indian markets. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, your asset class notes are visible only. Yes, nothing is visible. Oh, again, the thing is going down actually. Again, what is happening is the, um, uh, it's not showing the screen for, um, it's not showing when I shift out to other other screens. Although it's pretty clear that uh, the window, the correct window is being, is being shown, but uh, you are still seeing only the actual market instrument spreadsheet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I went into session notes, then I went into the stock screener. Uh, 
Okay, you could not see any of that. Okay. All right, so let's try. I think for today it's too late to. Um, Let me try one more time. I'll uh, we'll give it a few seconds, a few seconds more, and see because of the lag that Mithali mentioned. Let's see the lag. Are you able to see the screener now? No, sir. No, no, no sir. Let's okay. on asset classes, markets, and instruments. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and then re-share once again. I will stop sharing and then start sharing once again. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, uh, Jakar, I have to remind you that uh, you have to set up your login ID and all that. Forty. You still haven't responded with your ID and password. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let me stop sharing and try to share once again. Okay. Uh, sir, I tried, but I am facing some problems. So I will be contacting you regarding the same. So that's why I asked for the okay. contact information. Okay. Okay. Fine. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Let yes. me start Thank sharing you. again. Include system audio when I share screen. Okay, I'll include system audio. Yeah, okay, fine. If I'm playing anything on the system, fine. Where is this noise coming from? Somebody is not on mute. Okay, let me uh, number two. Network, stop, screener, window. Oh, Okay, desktop screen one and screen two. Okay, that would be the one and that would be the right one. Okay, now I've started sharing once again. Okay. And uh, tell me when you can see the stock screener. So we have full class present today. That's good. Still can't see the stock screen now. That means there's a problem. No, sir. Oh God! I mean, what is the? Uh, how do we solve this? I'm actually using the desktop Teams version. You know, I thought the desktop. I, I mean, I don't. I generally don't like using desktop clients. I prefer to use the browser-based version. Uh, but uh, I use the desktop clients version so that I thought it would be more stable. But um, I suspect this is a Teams problem because actually I suspect this is a Teams problem because I will just see my own bandwidth. I just try to load, let's say, a page like YouTube or something and see how fast it loads. Um, uh, yeah, it's loading pretty fast actually, and I'm not. I don't think this is a bandwidth problem any, anymore. I think it's actually. Uh, a teams problem, teams network problem. So in this case, what we will do, guys, is that it's my. Uh, I'm going to just keep on presenting, okay? As I, as if you guys can see me, and then so it's going to feel a little bit strange, but I will upload the video. Obviously, as you see, I've uploaded the first two videos also, and I hope everybody understands those videos are available through the notes master file, okay? So always use the notes master file as your main uh, access point to all the nodes okay those that way you get the latest i'll just go into mute okay for a while just one second because there's a sound nearby okay then uh, so always use the notes master file the spreadsheet file and uh, I, what i'm going to do is so there you can see also the uh, you can either access it through my youtube page So, um, okay, so what we'll do is you, you use the notes master file from there. You can see access. Uh, there's a page for the videos, uh, which is on the lecture videos uh, sheet. And then uh, you will have um, these. Uh, and uh, I, you can also access it from my YouTube page. 
if you go there. So what I will do is I will continue presenting for the class as if you guys can see my screen. And then you can just stay back the video later on for the discussion, understanding the discussion in the class. Okay? So it's going to feel a little bit weird, but we'll just have to deal with it. So uh, let's see. We'll try to find some other software, which I think everybody in the world is using Teams and Zoom and all this stuff. So I think their, their servers are not able to cope. That's my suspicion. Okay. So what I would suggest, liquidity, the, what I was saying is that one of the reasons you choose liquid stocks is that there is less market manipulation in liquid markets, all right? Less market manipulation in liquid markets. So that's one of the major reasons uh, for you to choose uh, liquid stocks, or li not just stocks, any market that you trade. Uh, you should always go for liquid markets. All right, and there's a discussion on liquidity with Siddharth and Otsav and uh, some of the students who stayed back at the end of the previous video, previous session video. So please make sure, like everywhere else, any discussion I have, which is part of the class lecture video, that becomes part of your syllabus. Okay, so even if you left the class before that, uh, which you're allowed to do, uh, but uh, when I release the class, but you have to make sure that you uh, listen to the video and capture all the material in the video. All right, so I will upload the video. And the recording is also going to be available once the class is over in the Google uh, Teams uh, chat note, uh, chat uh, log. So you can access it. We'll have to just deal with that for today. And maybe sometime down the road, uh, this stuff will. So another thing, guys, what you can do is, is there anybody here who is accessing this through the, uh, through another thing you guys can do, I think is a very good way to understand it, is, uh, is anybody accessing this through their phone and not through their desktop or laptop? Or even if you are on the phone, maybe you can open the session notes. Open the session notes and open the uh, session uh, calc file if I ever use the spreadsheet. Okay, I will be using the spreadsheet also. So open the calc file, open the uh, spreadsheet, uh, the session notes file through your notes master. If you can do that, maybe if you are accessing through the phone or you from your desktop or laptop, then at least you will not be completely lost. Maybe you won't see the charts. Uh, but you can set up your own charts and then you can follow along with what I'm saying. Is that clear? Let's do some random tests and see who is present, if anybody is sleeping or anything. Okay, let's ask Kushbu. Kushbu, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, so Kushbu must have gone to sleep. So, okay. All right. So this is good. So we should, uh, you know, from time to time, we should randomly check who is sleeping and who is awake. Okay. Let's ask uh, Piyush. Piyush, did yes, you follow what I said? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. So you guys can open the session notes and you guys can open the uh, calc file and then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Most of the time I'll be in the session notes or in the calc file. And when I go to charts, you can also open your own chart and see. So by and large, I think we will be able to get around this problem of the sharing screen. Uh, this will be our workaround. I should have thought of this solution earlier, but I was not thinking out of the box. Okay, great. So uh, so what I was saying is that less market manipulation and liquid markets. Now, what we want to do now is I'm going now to that uh, the Dow chemical. You know that uh, Dow, I need to re... Uh, so I'm going to the stock screener. I want to change that uh, figure, so uh, I'll change it later on. I will now go to the next stock, FCX. FCX is Freeport McMurray, very interesting stock. Okay, I'm now looking at FCX on my trading view. Okay, so this company is called Freeport McMurray. Okay, which is a uh, let's look at all. It's a very long history from 1996. Freeport McMurray is actually a copper and gold mining company. So very interesting company. So uh, and this is the chart that I'm using right now, uh, which is on the trading view. I have locked, uh, typed in FCX and I'm looking at the Freeport McMoran chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some steps uh, uh, in terms, and later on I will replace the Dow ticker, and uh, I'm going to go through some steps, and the same steps can be followed for all the others. Okay. So let's look at this. Uh, let's go back to the decision problem that uh, we had. Okay, if we go to our session for our session notes. Okay, so for your convenience, I will write everything in session notes. I'll try not to use the calc file. Okay, 
because uh, then we can write everything here, then we will later on uh, accept. Okay. Any other DPs that you can think of? Let's talk about, okay. So let's understand where we are. Okay. The investor has given you certain restric restrictions. You can only trade equities. You can only trade a certain set of 33 tickers that have been given to you and you can only trade spot. So fine, you are getting down to work. You have now started looking at FCX, which is Freeport MacMoran. It used to be called Freeport MacMoran Copper and Gold. It's a copper and gold mining company. You have to find out all this information. So one of the objectives of giving you all these tickers is that you should learn a little bit about the companies that you are um, you know, uh, trading. That is the objective. It is distributed evenly across the sectors. Okay. You can also open the other spreadsheet. If you, those of you who are on the laptop, you can open your spreadsheet also, the IPM20 Avantgarde Equity Fund, the list of tickers. And you can also open the uh, Notes Master. And from there, you can open the session uh, IPM Summer 20 Calc file. Okay. FTX, you must learn a little bit about all the companies. You will have understanding of the different sectors. Okay, so I come to FCX. I've got these problems. Uh, DPs have uh, now. I've already done DP one, two, three. Now I come to FCX. Now I'm, I just want to ask a few people. Uh, see any other decision problem that you can think of? Let's uh, let's ask Raghav. Raghav, any other decision problem that you can think of? Now that you are on FCX, any other decision problem that you can think of? What else do you have to decide? You come to FCX. Is one of your tickers. What do you, what else do you have? Can you think of other decision problems? Has no, everybody understood? At what time we have to enter or at what time we have to exit? Okay, time to enter and exit. Okay, time to enter exit. But uh, when you enter, let me ask you a counter question. When you enter, uh, when you enter, what do you do? I mean. When you say I entered the market, what did you do actually? Did you buy or did you sell or what did you do? Oh, sir, buy. Buy, okay. Are you always going to be buying? Sir, in most of the times. Why, 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 why should you be buying? Okay, let me show you some stocks which are maybe not doing too well. Uh, if you have a stock like maybe GE or something, would you like to buy even here? Okay, you can't see it, but GE is not doing too well. It's quite low. It's, uh, you know, it used to be worth, General Electric used to be worth, uh, I don't think it's one of your tickers. It is one of your tickers. Under industrial stocks, General Electric is one of your tickers. If you look at, if you take your eye trading view charts and you look at General Electric, in, nine, in 2000, August, August of 2000, General Electric was worth around $60. Today, General Electric is worth uh, $6.3. Okay. So it's like <laughs> it's almost one tenth of the price. And this is one of the major companies in the world. All right. So I'm just questioning uh, Raghav's uh, point. Okay. I've noted that it is time to enter or exit. That's what he's saying. Okay. Then I'm asking Raga whether he should buy or sell. He wants to always be buying. Now this I am uh, not comfortable with. Okay, I think you should be open on that. So from this hint, can anyone tell me what is the decision problem that Raga is actually indirectly getting at? Time to enter is also a problem, but can we? Okay, this is one and buy. Okay, buy or sell. Okay, so actually I have given you the other important decision problem already, but maybe we have lost some time. So anyway, let's ask somebody else. Okay, let's ask uh, Krish. Yes, Krish, anything else you can think of? So one of the decision problems is to buy or to sell. Okay, when I look at any stock uh, in the ticker list, I got 33 tickers on my list. So one decision problem I have to solve is should I buy or should I sell? Because this is a major decision, right? Okay, so obviously a major decision. Yes, you agree, Krish, that this is a major decision? Uh, sir? Yes, uh, sir. I I uh, I would like to say that uh, selling too soon would be a major decision problem. Selling come in. I couldn't hear you. Tell it come again. Hello. Am I audible, yes, sir? Yes, you are audible. Tell me, sir. I would rather prefer selling too soon would be a decision problem. Selling too. What? Is, what selling too, selling soon. too soon. Selling yes, too soon. 
Okay, yes, sir. Selling is actually what you are selling, selling too soon. Okay, this is not a DP actually. Problem actually. Okay, this is a this becomes a problem in retrospect. Okay, you know what retrospect is? Retrospect means looking backward. So selling too soon. How do you know that you sold too soon? You only find out later, right? After after you do it, right? Before you do, when you do it, you don't know whether it's too soon or too early or right time. You you don't know anything because you have just done it. Are you following? Sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, understand that what you said selling too soon is not a decision problem because selling too soon you only find out later that I sold too soon or I sold too early or I sold just at the right time. So that's not a decision problem. This becomes a problem. Okay, so we have to distinguish between a problem and a decision problem. Remember, a decision problem is based on is what we said. Uh, we have decided uh, where is the decision problem. Okay, we need to choose a decision. Okay. So, for instance, uh, you know, like uh, I gave you the example of whether to order pizza or whether to order lasagna for lunch. After you order the lasagna, then you realize that it was not very good. So now you think that maybe the pizza would have been a better choice. So it's actually a problem. The decision problem is really the choice initially, what to order. Okay. So we have to state it that way, and you have limited resources, and you have mutually exclusive uh, uses. Okay. So if you use it for one, you do, don't use it for another. So one of the decision problems we will list as DP3 will be uh, DP3 will be uh, buy or sell. Okay, uh, the numbering is not important, but you should understand uh, when to you know, uh, you know the uh, DP3. The numbering is not important, but you should remember the decision problems. Everyone agrees that this is a decision problem. Let's ask Priya. Priya, do you agree that this is a decision problem? That whether when I'm looking at any any particular stock, the fundamental problem is one of the important problems is should I buy this or should I sell this? Do you agree? Yes, sir, I agree. Okay, don't agree just because I'm asking you. <laughs> if no, you have no, any sir. doubt, then please. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of the fundamental problems you will face uh, when you're looking at any ticker that well, should I buy or should I sell this? Okay, so this is one problem. We are just trying to highlight the decision problems first, and then we'll go into the point of uh, how to solve how to solve them. Okay. Now I just want to uh, rephrase uh, the input that Raghav gave. Okay, let's just call it DP4. Instead of time to enter or exit, let me call it. Uh, the problem of the entry price. Okay. Entry price. Okay, let me just highlight them here like this. All right. Let me call it this way. So three is above four. Doesn't matter. Let me just move it to a problem. A little bit cluttered. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Raghav's input. It's a correct input actually. Uh, it is the time to enter. What time should we enter or exit the market? That will actually this will go into two different problems. But let's just take one part of his input, which is time to enter. Okay, we'll take the second part later on. So what we do is uh, we'll call it uh, time to exit. Time to exit will also be uh, split into two more parts, which we will do. Now, if everybody can open, uh, is it fair to assume that everyone can? Who who is not able to open the? I I need you guys to be opening the trading view charts or any other charting system which can access U.S. equity charts. You can use Yahoo Finance also if you want. Uh, either of those, Trading View or Yahoo Finance. Who does not have access to those charts uh, on their own computer? Anybody? Let's see if Kushbu has woken up. Kushbu, are you are you away now? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened? Went to sleep. Lunch was too big. Okay. All right. So, okay. Make sure you are available whenever I catch because I will try to randomly check who is sleeping. 
Okay. okay. So, anybody, uh, do you have access, Kushpur? Do you have access to some charting software, either Trading View, which is free, and so is Yahoo Finance? Do you have access to that? Can you open the chart if I tell you immediately? Can you yes. open it on your own? Okay. Yes. All right. So let's do one thing. Let I am going to be op opening the FCX on Trading View. Okay. So you guys should have already set up Trading View. If you haven't set it up, just go to Yahoo Finance. Not the India Yahoo. I think even from India you can get it. But the US version, Yahoo Finance, and just type FCX. You have seen the ticker F for France, C for Canada, X for X-ray. And I'll be discussing some of these uh, decisions with uh, with respect to this stock. Okay. So now, as we said, one of the fundamental decisions is whether I should buy or sell FCX. Okay. And the same question. The same problem applies to all the other tickers and every other decision that you have to take in investing. Okay, Fundamental question, should I buy or sell? Okay, now as we go through these, uh, as we go through these uh, uh, decision problems, if I move on to the next problem, I'm going to make an assumption arbitrarily about how I solve the previous problem. Okay, so we will take Raghav's uh, bullish bias and we will assume that we are buying Freeport Mark Memorandum for us, okay? But this thing, the, 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 this is not compulsory, okay? You can, as I said, that's why buy sell is a decision problem. Yes. Hey, can I tell, sir? Sachin, yes. sir. Before you have to put yourself on mute. So you guys have to click a little bit. Sometimes when I ask somebody, you unmute yourself, answer the question, and then uh, you have to go back to mute. Yes, who, uh, who has a question now? Uh, Sachin sir, Sachin this side. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Ask your question. Uh, sir, in my opinion, I think we should buy this share FCX uh, free for McMoran because he, he, the share is uh, almost is all time low. The all time low is 13.92 and current the share price is 14.56. So we need to buy this share. Hello. Hello. I I forgot to go back to my unmute because I muted myself when Sachin was speaking because otherwise the echo will come into the recording. So anyway, uh, so uh, you can hear me now again, Sachin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kushpu needs to go back to mute unless yeah, unless she is asking a question. Okay. So uh, yeah, so Sachin. Uh, so basically, I uh, you guys saw what I was what Sachin is saying. You are looking at the FCX chart, and Sachin is saying this chart is at all time near, very close to the all time lows. Okay. Yes, sir. And so we should buy this stock. Now that's an interesting point, actually. Um, buy FCX because very near to all time lows. Okay. Right. Now this is actually one approach to it. Okay, this is what such this is what Sachin is saying. I'm going to introduce uh, two terms here. Okay, this is a conversion. So what this means is you are looking at the notes. I'm not going to write everything because uh, I'm introduce another. I'm going to give you the notes on this later on. Okay, so there are two approaches uh, to looking at charts. Okay. Other approach is momentum. Okay, and when I give you the notes, you will see that there are some other uh, there are some other names for this also. This is also called uh, contrarian mean reversion, also called contrarian. Uh, this is also called trend following momentum. So what Sachin is saying is one way of looking at it. Many people look at it this way, and you will find that typically when you start looking at charts, that's why one of the important most important things you guys could be doing. Okay, forget all the textbook knowledge or anything else. One of the most important things you guys should be doing if you are interested in a career in markets, and remember all markets and all asset classes are the same, okay? Uh, that is whether you're looking at equities or looking at uh, currencies or, bar, uh, or debt or commodities. If you get used to looking at charts, the charts are pretty much all the same, okay? So one of the most important things you guys can be doing if you're interested in a career in finance is just keep looking at charts, okay? Just keep looking at charts and just form your opinion, doesn't matter if it, it turns out to be wrong, but observe what happens, 
don't fool yourself. Like for instance, Sachin decides that FCX, he should be buying it. Okay, so let him buy it. Let him make a note in his diary, in his trading journal, that I bought Freeport MacMoran at 14.5 roughly. Then he should observe what happens to this stock on a day-to-day -day basis. Suppose it starts to go down. Okay, now there is actually a lot of room on the downside because the lowest is around 2.9, still on $3. So it, from 14, it can go down to even $3, even below $3, all right? Theoretically, it's possible. Theoretically, it's possible. You have to have an open mind on that. So now what happens? Suppose Sachin buys it at 14.5, and then from the next day onward, it keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping, keeps on dropping. So what is Sachin going to do? What is he, at what point is he going to say that maybe I was wrong? Okay, so all these problems exist. So he should buy it and make a note in his trading journal and then observe what happens and then see what is going through his own mind. Now he's struggling with decision problems. What should I do? Should I buy some more? Should I sell it now? Cut my losses? All these problems will go on in your mind. And I can assure you, no matter what kind of, uh, you know, quantitative technique you use, there is no solution. There's no clear cut answer to this kind of problem of investing. This is the difference between investing and real science. Okay. Because in, in physics, chemistry, aeronautics, all these other things, once you crack the problem, you've cracked it. Like we have cracked the problem of fight. Thousands of planes are taking off every day. Nothing happens. When there's a crash, it's not because the science was wrong. We didn't understand it because some you have some stupid software glitch or something like they messed up this uh, 737 MAX. They put in stupid software, buggy software. It was putting the nose down. So it's always a human problem. There is no problem with the science. We understand the science perfectly. So it's science. Once you crack it, it's cracked forever. Okay. So you have to understand one thing because it's, this is something which nobody will tell you because uh, people who are in academics, they don't understand this. And many people who are not in academic, they will not have an incentive to tell you this because they are trying to sell you courses based on quantitative models and this and that. But I'm telling you based on my years of experience and I, you will see from uh, history that you will see many funds are failing. So there is never any perfect answer in investing. Okay. So there's no perfect method. So you have to be very focused on risk management, which means what do you do when it doesn't go uh, your way? Okay. Because in science, once you put up the Mars rover, you put it on the track, generally most of the time it goes your way. Okay? It goes according to the path, according to the, uh, the path you laid out. The ballistic missile lands exactly where you predicted. But this is not science. So it will not go your way. You should be ready for it. And you should have a plan. What are you going to do when it doesn't go your way? In fact, you'll also have a plan as to what you're going to do when it goes your way. Even there, there are problems, but those problems are less important. The more important problem is what are you going to do when it doesn't go your way? So this is something very important. Uh, make sure you guys do this. Very important for all the tickers I've given you. Keep following the markets. That's why I sent you a message in email, uh, by email saying, Follow the markets nonstop. That is the most important part of your education. And you should start looking at it like a surfer. You know what surfing is? Windsurfing. You take a surfboard and you hit the ocean, right? Everybody knows what surfing is. You think of these charts. You see all the up and down things going on in Freeport, McMoran. You see big drop, big rise. You think of these as waves and you think of yourself as a surfer, okay? You don't need to know much. If I throw you in the water now with a surfboard, nobody has any training. I don't give you any training. You're not going to be completely lost because you have something called instinct and eventually you will start to learn. If I throw you in the water with a surfboard, day one, you will not be able to do much. But when I come back after uh, you know, three months, you will be pretty good as a surfer. Everybody will be because you would have figured it out. By trial and error, you would have figured it out and you have a feel for the waves. So that's what I'm telling you to do here. Develop your own feel for the markets, and it can be anything. When you're looking at charts, it can be equities, it can be crude oil, it can be commodities like crude oil, copper, it can be currencies, all the same. I'm just telling you, all markets are the same. When you look at the charts, especially when you're looking, sticking to liquid markets, they are all the same. So develop this important uh, habit of tracking a few markets and tracking the regularly see what's happening every day and take a view like Sachin has taken a view that he wants to buy Freeport Macmoran. Doesn't matter if you're wrong, but take a view, take a decision and then track what happens to it. Okay. 
All right. So long lecture. I hope everybody is following. Pekka, do you follow what I said? Yes, sir. No, I asked Pekka, but uh, I think Kanika Your was morning. Your voice was breaking. Your voice uh, was breaking. So sir, uh, you said Pekka. Oh, I thought I said, okay, you thought I, no, no, I said critical. You think, uh, yes, sir, I'm there, but the okay, name was okay. unclear. You followed, you followed what, uh, you followed what I said just now, long lecture? Sir, I did follow, but uh, with the video problem, <laughs> there's not, uh, okay. uh, not very, it's not very clear. Okay, you should have also launched the own your own version of trading view or Yahoo Finance to look at the chart. But anyway, later on go through the video of the class and follow what I said. Okay, uh, make sure you follow what I said. Okay, so and if you have any doubts, you ask me. But to develop this field. Okay, right. So we go back to our decision problems. Okay, so so what I'm, I'll give you a note later on about this thing, what uh, Sachin is saying. Sachin has risen, uh, raised this question about the approaches to investing, okay? He's asking, actually he's talking about a very fundamental problem, which is how do you approach it? Mean reversion versus momentum. So the fact that Sachin is doing this, he's looking at this chart and saying it's at all time goes, and therefore I should buy it because obviously he thinks it's going to go back up, all right? But it need not be looked at this way. There's another alternative approach, which is you can also say this is a long downtrend. Okay, I'm pointing now. It will be appearing. It will appear in the video later on when you see it. So you can also say this is a long downtrend, and this, according to me, this downtrend is not over, so it will keep on going down. I don't see any indication of a reversal of the downtrend, so it will keep on going down. So what Sachin is saying is one approach, but it's not the only. Approach. So you can also look at the same FCX chart and you can say uh, you can come to a completely different conclusion, which is to say that uh, this is actually uh, you can also say this is uh, this stock. This stock is actually bearish. The outlook is bearish and I will keep on selling because I don't see any reversal of the long term downtrend. If you see if you look at the long term monthly chart, OK, you will see that if you look at all the data, there does not seem to be any clear reversal of the downtrend. Not yet, at least on the big picture charts. Okay, you could take that view. So you could also say that this is going to go down. Yes, somebody something. Okay, all right. Okay, so but one thing we have learned from uh, we are just getting an idea about this one idea, one to topic, which I will send you a note on it later, which is that uh, the concept of mean reversion versus momentum. So I'll briefly explain what that is. Mean reversion means what everybody should be looking at an FCX chart. What Sachin is doing is Sachin is actually behaving like a person who believes in the mean reversion philosophy. So when he sees the trend, he tries to go against the trend. Okay, he sees a long downtrend and he thinks that this is going to go back up. It, the trend is going to reverse. Okay, so the trend is going to reverse and start going back to the mean of the price range okay, of, of the price data distribution, okay, which is somewhere here in the middle. So that's a mean reversion approach. When you see a long tr a trend, you try to go against the current trend and you bet that the current trend is going to turn around and reverse. Okay, so and it will revert to the mean. Reversion means going back. Will go back to the mean. That's why mean reversion. So this is such as philosophy, but it need not be like that. Uh, for instance, my philosophy is more of a momentum type of approach, so which is a trend following approach. So people like me will look at this chart and say, well, this is a very long downtrend, and I don't see any sign of reversion, uh, reversal of the downtrend. So according to me, this downtrend will keep on going down until I see a clear reversal. So that would be a momentum philosophy or a trend following philosophy. So Sachin, by giving us the decision, has taken us into the discussion of two important terms, which I will give you the note for. You can study in detail later on. I have given you a brief idea. That mean reversion means you look at a chart and you bet that the current trend is going to reverse and turn around and go in the opposite direction. Whereas a momentum investor, you will assume that it, the current trend, whatever it is, it's going to keep on going in the same direction. 
the current trend is going to keep on uh, is going to continue. That's so. This distinction between mean reversion and reversion momentum. I'll supply the notes later. Okay. So, uh, is saying buy. So, okay. So, what we are going to do as we go through the decision problems is, before we go on to the next problem, we will make an assumption about how we solved the previous problem. Okay. So, in this case, we said no, it's not DP3. It should be DP4, right? Because uh, DP3 is already asset class market and instrument. So, it should be DP4. Five, we will make the entry price. Sorry. Right. So DP four, we identified the fundamental problem is that we have to decide whether we should buy or sell this. Okay. So we have decided because of the bias of Raghav and Sachin, we will bias here doesn't mean bias in a bad sense. Okay. Bias means I'm tilting towards this or tilting towards that. Okay. So. Based on their recommendations, we make an assumption that we have solved the DP4 by deciding to buy. So we have rejected sell, we have chosen buy. But please remember that this is not compulsory in every case. You examine every case, every ticker at every point of time and you can come to a different conclusion. You could also decide to sell. But these are the fundamental choices, buy, sell, or if you don't do anything, you can keep that as a third choice, which is don't do anything. Okay. You can keep this also as uh, uh, weight. Okay, buy sell weight. We have not. No, we normally don't write list weight. Uh, we can just keep that. Okay, buy sell weight means you don't do anything right now. You wait and see what happens. Okay, so we decide that we solve this. We make an assumption that we solve it by buy. Now, now we come to the question, uh, the point that I think Raghav had raised. That is, he said time to enter and exit. And I have reframed that and I, we are first focusing on time to end and uh, we are just going to take those as separate in, uh, in, uh, inputs, time to enter and I am going to write it in a different way. I am going to write it as entry price, okay? Entry price, let me write the entry price in a different way. Here we have two choices. Okay, let's go back because you can't see this. But uh, I will keep looking at it because that that will get captured in the video. So entry price, we are going to re reframe the entry price as everybody understands the market prices. Whatever you see happening on your screen is the market on your uh, TWS, etc. Any kind of uh, price display. The current price is the market price. Okay, so we are going to write it as entry price has three parts. So one option you have is you can enter at the current market price. Okay, obviously you can enter at the current market price, which means you can place in going back to such as question about a market order. You would click on order type you would place a buy order. I'm showing it with respect to crude oil because the other markets are not open. Uh, I can also show it for currencies, but we are showing it for crude oil. I say ma limit. I can choose market unless I can choose a market order. So the first choice we have is, so I will give you more detailed notes also on this, uh, on how the order types relate to the decision problems. but. One, one thing you have to understand is that entry price, you have uh, three choices essentially. The first choice is actually one. We'll put this as one. Okay. First choice is at market price. You will have two more options. We'll do is I want to write this at uh, no, I will write this here so I have more space to write. I don't want this to go into the next line. Yeah, okay, so this will be two and this will be three. Right now, I'm going to change that obviously. The first entry price decision is at the first problem is at market price, okay, or 
favorable then marketplace and this will be limit order and sometimes it's less favorable than market price these are our three options okay i'll explain each of these options but let's first make sure you understand what we mean in plain english when we use these terms okay let's say um limit order this will be a stop order so here itself you have in discussing the decision problem of entry price okay which we can keep our decision problem number 5 okay again as i said numbering is not important what you have to remember is the decision problems okay at market price okay let's take nikita do you understand what is meant by entering at market price yes nikita what happened nikita has also gone to sleep okay so let's ask uh, shresh shresh do you understand what is meant by entering at market price yes sir okay so market price means essentially you just see whatever uh, is the current is price yes go ahead yes go ahead sir so it is the price at which investor buy or sell no but market price i say uh, at when you are entering at market price means you choose the present market price you can't say that i want uh, something better than this or anything that means you are happy with whatever is the current market price yes sir is that clear like if you want yes, to sir. buy a house at the current market price for that house is say uh, 3 crores then you don't wait saying that i wait for the price to drop so you say i want it right now okay i will pay the market price is this clear yes sir okay so at market price when you buy at market price that means you just buy at the current market price so let me just make it even more clear let me get uh, at current market price be clear if you say market price means current market price but i'll just make it uh, doubly clear okay so current market price means the thinking behind this is that when do you choose to buy at the current market price or sell a transact at the current market price in this case we are deciding buy we are talking about buy because we made an assumption that we solved dp4 by deciding to buy okay so dp5 now that we have decided to buy what should be the entry price so we can discuss this dp5 in terms here we have three choices okay given that we have decided to buy we have three choices here we can buy at current market price which is which is what you do typically if you feel that uh, prices may actually shoot up further and there is no point in waiting because if prices are going to shoot up immediately and i better buy at the current market right now if you buy at the current market you don't have a problem of missing your uh, trade that means if the house is available you buy it right away that means you don't have a problem of not being able to buy the house so you just buy it at the current price so this is what you do you decide to buy at the current price when you feel that the market price is going to shoot up if you are a buyer uh, then if you feel it's going to shoot up right away then you don't wait you buy it at the right market at the current market and for this you use a market order so when you go back to your when you go back to your uh, tws display uh, that uh, here so if you just choose market under order type you will choose market okay uh, initially when you give the order it will choose go into limit but you have to click on it and you have to choose market mkt that's a market order okay and then you click transmit so if you click transmit the market order it will click it will uh, we will discuss this in more detail later but i'm just giving you an overview right now that it will click at the current market and the advantage of this market order is that it guarantees your execution okay so the market order guarantees execution we will write all this stuff here also and you will see it in your notes also later on guaranteed guarantees you understand what is meant by execution execution means doing the deed 
So if Suresh decides to buy the house right away, he tells his broker, okay, I don't want to wait anymore. Let's buy it at three crores. Immediately, buy it immediately at the market price. So he is guaranteed to get the house. That's what it means, guaranteed execution, which means your order is executed. There's no risk that uh, it does not, your execution does not, your trade does not happen. Okay, so guarantees execution. Does not guarantee So understand this, that essentially when you give a market order, now we are being more specific about the market order, and we are departing from the example of buying the house, which I just gave to Suresh, that we are departing from that, uh, that here in the case when you use a market order in TWS or any other trading system, the market order has a specific meaning. It means that once I transmit this, okay, right now I see that in the offer price is 40. That's your bell, okay? I'll release you as usual. I will release you quickly. I don't, I don't like to detain students for too long. Maybe one or two minutes. So I'll just explain this last point. That when you give a market order, it guarantees the execution but does not guarantee price. Now we are talking about specific in, uh, financial markets, market order types, uh, properties of a market order. So when, see right now the offer price is 41.82. I press transmit on the market order. See the price automatically ch has already changed to 85.86. So it does not guarantee me the price that I'm looking at when I transmit my market order. Okay. When I transmit the market order, the price was showing 41.82 and I transmit market order. But this system will just go ahead straight away buy in the market, whatever be the price. So when it goes to execute in the, mar in the market, the price may actually have gone to 41.86. It will still execute, okay? So the market order does not have a price limit on it. So you have to understand market order is to be used where you are so scared that the market is going to run away from you. If you're a buyer, you're aware, worried that the market is going to immediately shoot up. You don't care about price, few crores here and there. You just say, just buy it, okay? You say, just buy it. I don't care what the price is, just buy it right now. That's your, that's your mentality when you use a market order. So, okay, so I'll release you guys now. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of time because of the session, but you guys have some class, I guess, after this. In any case, I will not detain you beyond the detailed time. Uh, and you guys can do one thing. Uh, what you can do is you can organize between yourselves. You can appoint a CR or anything. Anytime you, uh, you have now, and one of the advantages of online classes is we can meet anytime. We can just uh, plan ahead and meet anytime. If you want to have a special tutorial session, Okay, just uh, you guys just organize between yourself, appoint a CR and just coordinate with me. We can always plan and set it up. So we are not constrained to 20 sessions. Okay, we can have as many sessions as we want. We will have 20 official sessions and then tutorial sessions. We can always organize, but try to make it a little bit uh, to just make my life a little easier. Uh, try to organize between yourselves and uh, maybe I can also announce a tutorial session sometime and you guys can attend at that time. Okay. So you can appoint a CR and then we can coordinate and figure this out. Okay, so the class is dismissed. You Just wait one second. Let me just take the attendance download. Uh, I'll just take the download attendance and then you guys can go. Hopefully it's downloaded. So the tragedy is that you sh could not see my, uh, oh, it could not show in my uh, thing here, but I will think, think it's, uh, it will be there. Okay, don't worry. I think it will be there. Okay, you guys can go now. So I have detained you for two minutes. That's okay. All right. Okay. So uh, yeah, anybody has any questions at this point? Uh, no, re sir. Rest can go. Rest can go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll keep the I'll keep the recording on. If anyone has any questions, yeah. Sir, yeah. Uh, sir, will you discuss something about the Indian stock market? Yeah. Uh, Indian stock market, we are we are not going to discuss specifically like that. What you will do is you will uh, make sure that you look at all your 
in all your textbooks that you get, there are certain Indian sections, Indian okay. market sections. Okay. So you read those sections and those are basically like information. Okay. They are not like, uh, you know, something conceptual. They are just like information like NSE opens at 9.15 a.m. So I'm not going to give you information in the class. Okay. So uh, those kinds of information type uh, kind of input, you get it on your own. And if there is anything there that you don't understand, okay, then you ask me. All right. And then that's what I'll explain conceptually. The, but what we will discuss is with respect to U.S. markets. But it's exactly the same. You have to understand that there are some terminology. There are some terms which in, in India, there are different terms used. But uh, that you can ask those. Uh, we can explain those terms. But conceptually, there is no difference between trading in equities in Indian markets and other overseas markets. Conceptually, the, the theory that you learn is exactly the same. Okay. Okay, sir. That's why. Because Indian markets are very illiquid and these the regulators are really dumb. Like you see in this COVID crisis, they suddenly curtail the trading hours. The U.S. has been hit much more hard, much harder than us. They never curtail their trading hours. Here, our regulators are always afraid that somebody is going to make some profit somewhere, you know, yes, as sir. if the whole world is going to go end, you know, there's going to be a solar eclipse. If somebody got COVID, that somebody should make a profit, you know. So these guys are such a bunch of morons that, you know, it's just these markets have been destroyed because of these stupid people. So I, I, I think you should not study finance from the Indian perspective because these guys don't understand anything. They have destroyed our markets and our economy. So uh, that's the thing. But rest assured that the theory is exactly the same. Okay, so you're not losing anything. And information like NSE opens at 9.15, US markets open at 9 o'clock, 9.30. Those are just, that's like information type of input. That is not so important. You have to know that also, but that's not impo as important as conceptual input. Is this clear? Yes, sir, yes. Thank okay, you. Okay, we see some people have raised their hand. Nikita has raised her hand. Yes, Nikita. Yes, sir. Actually, there was some problem with my system, so I couldn't answer and I replied in the chat. And also, okay. while you were taking attendance, I got locked out. I don't know how. So I rejoined it. I think maybe I won't appear in the attendance list. Okay, okay, fine. I'll, I'll make a note for your name. Okay. Okay, All sir, right. thank you. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. So no other question. Then I think if there's no other question, we'll discontinue here. Okay. I'll disconnect the call and uh, we will, and you can always call me anytime for any requirement. Okay.